This is it, the moment we've all been waiting for, the final battle. You can see my setup is a little bit different than all of the battles leading up to it today. I have the two final matchas. So we have Macha Akatsuki from the Tea Crane going up against Ujimacha Taiko-san from Ocha. And what I did is I had my wife measure out one gram of each and then 3.75 grams of each. So we will have the regular amount that we do for the breakaway matcha style and then we'll also have the larger amount to do a koi cha style tasting of each. I only have one chawa uh, to do them back to back, not side by side. I thought it'd be educational to try it both ways today for this final battle. As mentioned, my wife measured these out. I don't know which is which. Uh, right down below here we have two little symbols. We have the pentagon on this one and the star on this one. I've also waited a full week before filming this final battle so that my memory of each was a little bit muddied, what they taste like and what they look like. In front of me here I don't know which is which. In this booklet right here she has written down what the color, either brown or black, of the Natsume is corresponding to each symbol. This is our first blind tasting, so it should be very exciting, give us the best possible results. Looking at the powders in front of me here, I can see that this one, the star, is a little bit brighter green, whereas the pentagon is a little bit darker green, but they both look very vibrant, very fresh. You know, th this is it's not like a muted dark, right? Like when it starts to oxidize and it gets a bit brown, this is more just like a darker green, like more of a jade, whereas this is a brighter green, like a, a lime green type of a style. To start off, let's do the koi cha style of each. To the 3.75 grams of matcha, we will add 40 milliliters of our 70 degree water. I'll measure that on this scale over here. And then we will taste the first Koi Cha offering. I think I'll just start off with the Pentagon. So we'll start with the Pentagon and the Koi Cha style of that. Nice close look here at the powder. So we got our Cha Wan here now with the matcha and 40 ml of our water. And then we take our Cha Sen here and we're just gonna give it a nice whisking up. Side here and now we'll give the koi cha style of pentagon a taste. Cheers. Very creamy, very rich, super dense, no discernible bitterness, but just a heavy, heavy hit of that umami green flavors. Getting a little bit of pea coming in the aftertaste here. It's super sweet now in the aftertaste as well. Getting some of that pea sweetness, some baby spinach artichoke hearts just kind of peeking through a little bit. A little bit of uh, like mature asparagus, but the, the tips just so sweet just sitting here letting the, the flavors kind of wash over me testing out the length of the finish it's minty aftertaste starting to creep in it's like super sweet spring water the kind of minerally spring water and then a little touch of mintiness slightest little bit of tingling on the sides of my tongue hmm. very good all right i will wash these out and then we'll come back and do the koi cha style of star i'm already noticing this one has a bit more that uh, yellow tea cinnamon that i always mention right i guess i pick it up often enough in the matcha i can call it a, a matcha cinnamon definitely get a bit of that cinnamon flavor coming off of this star nice i don't know if i showed you the koi cha on the pentagon kind of what we're looking at here some of that uh, cinnamon note has died down on the aroma but still lots of fresh green vegetableness. Let's try the taste now. Okay, a, a, just a little bit of bitterness coming through on the star. Not bad, but there is just a little bit. Slightest bit of astringency, definitely some bitterness. Whereas in the Pentagon, I didn't notice really any bitterness at all. Ooh, super creamy there. You get that hit of the full rich umami vegetable broth, all the concentrated mushroom and savory hint of the umami and just coming pow right at you. But then there is a little bit of bitterness in the aftertaste. Much more pronounced kind of mintiness now coming through on the aftertaste of this one. A little bit less of that conversion into sweetness on the sides in my mouth, but there is some of the mintiness. Yeah, definitely some astringency is kind of drying out the tongue just a little bit. But very good. But just based on the koi cha right now, I would say that the pentagon is just slightly in the lead. So let's put our cha wan and cha sen aside. And now we can do our more traditional 
traditional breakaway matcha style. We'll get them both brewed up. Um, obviously they're already measured out, but I will sieve them in, get our 30 mil, start the aerator, and then top them off with the remaining 30 mil. So I'll finish up the brewing for the breakaway matcha style for both of these, and then I'll place the cups on their corresponding geometric shape. All right, see you back in a minute. Okay, they are all brewed up. The final breakaway matcha style brewing of our Matcha Madness series. The star seemed to dissolve into the water a little bit easier. Um, I didn't really have to do much pre-mixing. It just kind of dispersed into the water almost immediately where there's a bit more clumping happening on the Pentagon. It all whipped up eventually, but it was just a little bit easier going on the star here. You can also see the crema is a bit thicker on star, a bit more creamier looking. The colors, both very deep jade. That uh, slightly lighter, more vibrant color of the powder from the star coming through again as just a little bit more vibrant and brighter in the cup here today. I don't know how much it has to do with the way I was aerating or whatever, but if you look on the sides here of Pentagon, it's kind of like a uniform film, whereas on the star here you can see just at the top there's a little bit of the powder kind of lingering. While it may have dispersed into the water quicker, maybe that's why some of those finer particles ended up sticking around the, the top of the ledge there. I don't know what that means, if anything. Another little difference that I thought was maybe worth pointing out. The other thing I did notice with Star is I did get a hit of that cinnamon note again as I was whipping it up. Let's try smelling Pentagon now. Super fresh, clean spring water. A little bit of baby pea sweet. Not much of a strong vegetal note, just very light greenness and a little bit of sweet. The star here, definitely more coming in the aroma, a little bit more of those woodsy notes, some of the browner, twiggy style. I'm not getting much, maybe just the slightest whisper of some of that cinnamon trying to escape, but more of a dense, darker green note, whereas the Pentagon was a little bit more like young spring greenness. This is more like heart of summer, rich, vibrant greenness. So like spring versus summer. I guess is how I would classify the greenness between the two. Give them a taste now. Let's start with the Pentagon. Cheers. Oh yeah. The Koi Cha style is nice, but it can be maybe just a little overwhelming sometimes. There's just so much dense umami packed hit, whereas the Breakaway Matcha style, which is closer to the Usu Cha, I feel like I can eke out a little bit more nuance in the flavor. I mean, obviously it tastes more watery compared to just coming off the two Koi Chas, but very sweet, still no bitterness. No matter how I taste, Pentagon, I just can't find any bitterness in here. It's just kind of a gentle, sweet, oh, really sweet there. Super sweet. I'm just gonna drink this whole thing before I even get over to Star. Very sweet, very delicious. Maybe a little bit one notey. Well, it's spring greens, but it is like pea and maybe some of the baby zucchini and some baby spinach. Those young baby greens kind of all mixed together. So it's not just sweetness. All right, I gotta stop myself. Now let's try Star here. Yeah, just a, there's a little bit. Definitely more going on. It's more complex matcha over here on the Star side. In the breakaway matcha style, can't really pick out any bitterness. There was there was definitely some bitterness in the Koi Cha that I could taste, but in the breakaway matcha style, I don't, I can't pick up any bitterness. There is still some astringency though. The astringency that I picked up in the Koi Cha still just a little bit of puckering up the tongue. Also very good. Try the Pentagon one more time. Yeah. The description from their website reads as follows. We didn't think we would ever be able to offer another matcha comparable to the famous Monten we currently carry, yet it has come to pass. Like Monten, we realized Uji Matcha Taikosan is an expensive matcha and we make no bones about it. This is about as exclusive matcha as you will ever find. If you are in search of the absolute best matcha available anywhere, however, then your search is over. Until Ocha.com obtained this gem from Japan's oldest tea shop, this matcha had never been available outside of Japan. The farm where Taiko-san is grown is known as 
Taiku Tutsumi and is located not too far from our supplier's tea shop in Uji, Japan. The area is both a tea farm as well as an archaeological site. The matcha is produced in this small field by the river beside an ancient levee which is being studied for its construction methods. The grower, Mr. Fukui, farms several strains of tea in this plot and he adjusts the blend every year according to the plant's condition to create the specific flavor. As with Monten, the plot is small and the yield is limited. This hand-picked tea has an abundance of umami, which has been described as sweet with a hint of bitter and having a fresh green smell. The color is rich and dark, very intense green froth. Compared with Monten, this matcha has a more masculine taste. Again, the grower has an extremely small production and is currently supplying only the local market with this grade, so the supply is extremely limited. Ocha.com will have this item in stock as supplies are available, which may be very hit and miss. Because of limited space and the age of the tea plants used for this item, the grower will never be able to increase his production. There is no competition for this grade. This is a connoisseur's class matcha. As with Matcha Montan, Ocha.com is the first to carry this matcha outside of Japan. All of the high praise are warranted. It is an extremely amazing matcha. Just could not quite eke out the win in our battle today. Now for the first time, I can actually tell you about our winner because we have reached the end. The ultimate winner of Matcha Madness is Matcha Akatsuki from the Tea Crane. This matcha comes in a 40 gram container, so that's 10 grams more than most matchas you'll find, priced in at $50. So the price is comparable to Taiko-san, but remember you're getting 10 grams more, so the price per gram is actually only $1.25. Now this is the, possibly the most surprising bit of information for me. The season for matcha akatsuki is spring of 2016. One thing you'll often hear is that matcha should be drunk within the first year of production, but this 2016 picking won the entire competition. Very surprised by that, and has in fact sparked a, a little test that I want to do, which will be the subject of a future video. The cultivar, this is the Samyadori cultivar, and the origin is Kyotanabe in Kyoto, Japan. This is a single estate matcha. And the description coming off of the Tea Crane's website, Matcha Akatsuki is the Tea Crane's original selected matcha for the service of tea during a ritual preparation of thick tea. This tea is of the highest grade and was manufactured in Kyoto's most famous Gyokuro production region, Kyotanabe, using mostly organic fertilizers. Gyotanabe is known for its highly sweet and lush flavor suitable for the production of gyokuru. It is this lushness that is also reflected in this particular matcha. Harvesting was conducted by hand, resulting in a tea of the highest grade using only the youngest, freshest, and sweetest new buds. I want to talk a little bit more about the, the tea crane in general. There was a second matcha from the tea crane in our matcha madness battle that I don't think made it past round one. The proprietor of the tea crane is a European expat currently living in Japan, and you'll be seeing more tea crane products coming up on the channel as I also backed his Kickstarter for a tea subscription service. The Kickstarter was uh, described as your Japanese tea concierge service, I believe. The idea being that he would scour Japan looking for the best teas and then make them available to his audience through the subscription service. Japan is known for their green teas, specifically their sencha and their gyokuru and their matcha. When you think of Japan and tea, you typically think of those three and you almost always think of green teas. But what I really like about the tea crane is that he's exploring all kinds of different manufacturing techniques that are taking place in Japan. I just like the exploration of what Japan is capable of producing. Look for more tea crane products coming on the channel as well. I'm just super blown away by this matcha akatsuki. It is an expensive matcha, there's no getting around it, but if you look at where these two came in, if you ignore the breakaway matcha, the super hyper premium offerings, and super expensive, therefore, offerings, these were the most expensive matchas in the entire battle. Interesting to see, like many products, you usually get what you pay for up to a point. Just like with wine, right, if you pay a little bit more, you're going to get a little bit better until you hit a certain threshold where the return versus how much you're paying can be skewed. Don from Mayleaf explains it as trying to purchase on the knee of the curve. And I think that's where both of these matcha lies, just kind of right on that sweet spot. Maybe just a little bit higher, 
right? Just a little bit touch above that. I have a few more thoughts and I want to do a kind of closing thoughts video and that will be separate from this video because this one's already getting super long. So I'm going to stop this video here, but I'm going to then just record the next one and that will be coming out tomorrow with kind of my closing thoughts on this whole process and what I've learned along the way. And so I hope I'll see you tomorrow and we'll close out Matcha Madness and move on to some other videos. Hope to see you along for the ride.